This is an introduction to the inclusion-exclusion principle. So before we talk about the principle of inclusion-exclusion, let's look at an example. In the real estate ads, we have 64 homes for sale with garages, 21 with swimming pools, and 17 with both. How many total homes are for sale? Now, there's a lot of ways to go about this, but we're going to do it sort of the, the long way. We're not going to use our equation yet. So I know that in a Venn diagram, if this first circle represents garages, and say my second circle represents pools, I cannot take 64 and put it right into this circle because I know that 17 have both. And so I'm going to actually put 17 here in the middle because 17 represents the intersection where there's both a garage and a pool, which means the 64 has to be everything inside this circle needs to be 64, and that includes the 17. So I actually have to take 64 minus 17 to get 47, and that is the number that would go here. The other circle includes 21 total homes, and that includes the 17 that I had before. So I had to do uh, 21 minus 17 to get four. So there's actually only four homes here that have a pool but no garage. There are 47 homes that have a garage but no pool. And then there's the 17 homes that have both. So how does that help me? Because now I can just add these values together. I can say 47 plus 17 plus 4 is the total number of homes for sale, which is, oops, 68 homes. Now, of course, I don't want to have to draw a Venn diagram and do that math every single time. And so now let's look at the principle of inclusion-exclusion. So let's take a look at the principle of inclusion-exclusion, which is how we would do this without having to draw a picture. First, let's take a look at why it works. So the principle of inclusion exclusion says, instead of doing it the way we did it before, where we have to sort of find each section of our Venn diagram, I can just take the cardinality or the number of um, elements of set A plus the number of elements of set B minus the intersection, and that should give me all of the elements in the union. So we'll do it with our um, example that we just went through in just a moment, but let's take a look at why this works. When I look at set A, what's being added is everything in this section as well as everything in this section. And when I take a look at set B, What's being added is everything in this section as well as everything in this section. And so this section has been counted one time and this section has been counted one time, but this section got counted two times and that's not okay because we don't want it counted twice. So notice what happens here is I'm just subtracting the intersection one time so that everything is being counted once. So this um, principle then says I can take 64, I can add 21, and I can subtract 17, and that will give me the same answer that I got using the other method, and that answer was 68. So let's take a look at a couple of examples um, using the principle of inclusion exclusion. And again, this is just with two sets. So we haven't looked at anything with three sets yet. This is how many positive integers not exceeding 1000. So 1000 is the top integer that I'll be looking at are divisible by seven and 11. So I'm looking for the union of sets of divisible by seven, which we'll call A, union divisible by 11, which we'll call B. And that means I need to find the number of 
um, items or elements in set A plus the number in set B and subtract the number that are basically divisible by both 7 and 11. So we're just going to use a good old floor function for this and we're going to say the number of elements in set A would be 1000 divided by 7 except I want the floor function because the floor function is just going to round it down. I'm going to add to that the number divisible by 11 and then I'm going to subtract the number divisible by both 7 and 11 which would be 77, um, 7 times 11 so I'm going to divide by 77 and that's going to give me my final answer. So turns out there's 142 that are divisible by 7, there are 90 divisible by 11, and there are 12 that were counted twice, once in A and once in B, so I have to take it away once, and I get 220. Second example, same idea. I'm looking at computer science and math majors, so if I want the number of math majors union the number of computer science majors because that would be the total number of people in discrete math then I would take the number of math majors 15 plus the number of computer science majors which is 42 and I would subtract anyone that was in both category, both math and computer science, which looks to be 8. So I'm going to add 15 and 42 and I'm going to subtract 8 and I end up with 49 as my solution. So now let's look at inclusion exclusion for three sets so we can start to come up with possibly a pattern. I want to add a, B, and C. I want to find the union of those three sets. So I'm just going to sort of use a counting mechanism here. And I'm going to start by adding A and B and C. And let's see where we stand when I do that. This section has been counted one time. This section is being counted once this section is being counted once, this section is being counted once. That's just for A. For B, I've got this section being counted once, and then this section, this section, and this section. And then if I look at C, I've got this section being counted once, and then I've got this section, and this section, and this section. So what it looks like is I've got a problem <laughs> because A, B, and C, the parts that I colored in with the pretty colors, are all counted once, but I want to count everything once, and I've got some issues because there's some things being counted more than once. So now let's go about um, subtraction. So if I wanted to subtract, what if I subtracted A intersect B and a intersect C and B intersect C. So if I subtract all of that, let's see what's being counted now. So I've taken away one of these, that's A intersect B, and one of these, and if I take away A intersect C, that's one of these, and one of these and if I take away B intersect C then that's one of these and uh oh one of these so where do I stand now the yellow sections good the pink sections good the green sections good and I'm just gonna color these in in blue these are okay now because they're only being counted once instead of twice but now what's happened to the middle? I was counted three times, now all of a sudden it's counted zero times, and that's not okay. So now I have to add back the number of elements in 
the intersection of A, B, C. And that is just this region right here, and it has now only been counted one time. So this is how we would do this for three sets. So could I continue that for four sets? What pattern are we looking at? So it appears that we're going to add all of the elements that have of just one set of each of the individual sets. Then we're going to subtract the intersection of two sets. We're going to add the intersection of three sets. I guess if there were four sets, then I would subtract the intersection of the four sets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So before we look at a four set question, let's look at this three set question. How many permutations of 10 digits either begin with 987? So we're gonna say A is that it begins with 987. And so let's go ahead and look at that one before I even look at the other two possibilities here. If A begins with 987 and I'm dealing with the 10 digits, then what I have is out of the 10, this is nine, this is eight, this is seven, which means I have seven left over that I can permutate, seven factorial. So this is seven factorial. Let's do the same for the next one. It says contain four, five. So we're gonna let B contain four, five in the fifth and sixth positions. So again, if I was looking at, let me use a different color. So in the fourth and fifth position, I have four, five, which leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that I can permutate, eight factorial. And again, what I mean by I can permutate means one could be in any one of those positions. And once I have one set, then two can be in any one of the seven leftover positions, etc. Now let's look at C, and C would be that it ends with one, two, three, which means again, I'm going to have one, two, three here, which leaves me with seven positions to permutate. So in my formula, let's start my formula down here at the bottom. A union B union C. I'm going to start by adding seven factorial plus eight factorial plus seven factorial. So that's all the, the addition. Now what I have to look at is what happens when I have A intersect B and A intersect C and B intersect C? So let's look at all of those. So again, with my 10 positions, A says I have 987 and B says contains four and five. So how many positions? One, two, three, four, five positions with five digits left to permutate. For A and C, I still have nine, eight, seven, but C says it ends in one, two, three. So I've got one, two, three, four to permutate. And then for B, C, I've got four, five here. I have one, two, three here. I have one, two, three, four, five to permutate. So I'm going to subtract five factorial. I'm going to subtract four factorial. I'm going to subtract five factorial. 
or alternatively I could have said minus and then added up all of those together. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this since we already have it. Now in this one the last thing I need to do then is to add back that middle section that I haven't done anything with and that is the A intersect B intersect C and what am I dealing with there? So again, I've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten positions. This says nine, eight, seven must be here. B says four, five must be here. C says one, two, three must be here. Therefore, I only have two positions to permutate, two times one. So then I'm going to add back the two factorial. So again, working all of that out in my calculator, I end up with 50,138 different permutations for those 10 digits given the stipulations. So obviously there's quite a bit more practice we could do together, uh, but I wanted to just introduce it to you and let you do some practice on your own. Um, but this is the formal definition for the principle of inclusion exclusion and I chose not to go through this proof with you but feel free to look in your textbook um, for the proof of this essentially what it's telling us that we're doing to find the union of any number of finite sets is we're adding all of the number of elements in each single set we're subtracting the intersection of two we're adding, so this next one would be plus the summation as one is less than or equal to i is less than or equal, sorry, is less than j is less than k is less than or equal to n of a i intersect a j intersect a k, etc. And so we're saying we're going to add those and then we would subtract anything that had four, the intersection of four, we would add the intersection of five, subtract the intersection of six, etc. And essentially it turns into this pattern. So this negative one to the n plus one is what gives us whether we're adding or subtracting and then we're just um, including the intersection of the set all the way to n.